Hello world, Leo here, and today we'll be discussing 8 things that I never knew about lists in Python. Number 1. Adding a list to itself. So let's say we have x is equals to apple, and as we know, if we use the append method, let's say we add a 1, and if we print x again, we will get apple and 1. And notice that whatever we add here in our append will be added to the back of our list. So if I change this to orange, we will get apple orange. And here we have it. However, what if for some reason I decide to add x to itself? So here, notice that I do x dot append x. So I'm adding x to the back of itself. And so if I run this, I'm going to get this thing. So apple comma, and we have this list with a dot 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 in the middle. So this triple dot is also known as an ellipsis and is automatically printed out by the print function if there is some sort of a cyclic reference. So here, x is at the end of itself. And if we try to print that, we are going to have an infinite amount of apples here. And so the print function is able to detect this and hence it will help us put an ellipsis over here. So going off tangent by a bit, the ellipsis can actually be used as a pass. So I'm going to define hello, and here I'm going to put dot dot dot. So if I call hello, nothing will happen. So this dot 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 is the same as pass. Number two, combining lists using star. So first I'm going to create a bunch of lists. One, two, b is equals to three, four, and c is equals to five, six. And next, I'm going to combine everything together to get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So one way I can do this is A plus B plus C. And if I run this, I'm going to get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. However, there's an alternative way that we can do this too. So I'm going to do X is equals to this. And here, I'm going to put star A, star B, and star C. So if I print X, I'm going to get the same thing. So here, the star operator will in a way unpack whatever we have in A. So here, A is a list containing 1 and 2. So if I unpack it, I'm going to have 1, 2 inside this list, which results in the 1, 2 at the start of our list. So same thing for B and C. Number 3, the insert method. So I'm going to start off by defining a list called fruits. The fruits is equal to apple orange pear. And so, if we want to add something to the back of the list, we can use the append method. However, what if we wish to add something in the middle of the list or at the front of the list? So if that's the case, we can use the insert method. So fruits.insert, and here we add in the index at which we want to add our thing, and let's say pineapple. So let's print fruits, and let's see what happens. And here we have pineapple, apple, orange, and pear. So notice that pineapple is now at index 0 and everything else has been pushed back. So if I change this to a 1, pineapple will be at index 1. So now notice that pineapple is at index 1 and everything else after 1 has been pushed back to accommodate this. Similarly, if I add a 2, Pineapple will now be at index 2. Number 4, Arrays. So here, an array is a special type of list that can store only one type of value. And to create an array, we do not need to install any external library, but we do need to import it. So from array, import array. So here, x is equals to array i, which stands for integer. And let's say 1, 2, 3. And if we print x, we will simply get array 1, 2, 3. So similarly, we can add other integers into x by using the append method. So let's say we add a 4. And if we print x, we are going to get array 1, 2, 3, 4. And if we do that again, we will get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. However, one thing to note is that if I add a float number, an error will happen. So if I run this, I'm going to get 
float object cannot be interpreted as an integer. So here, our array x can only contain integers. As for what kind of string to pass in into the first argument over here, we can head on over to the Python documentation, and here we can see D is a signed character, capital B is an unsigned character, I is a signed integer, and capital I is an unsigned integer. So there are many other array types that you can pass in here, but I'll not go into detail for the rest of them. So it may seem like an array is a more restrictive kind of list, but one advantage that an array has over the list is that Computations for arrays are much faster because every type is the same type and Python does not have to do type checks for every single value. Number five, the pop method. So let's say x is equals to apple orange pair. And next, I want to remove apple from the list while simultaneously assigning apple to some other variable. So let's say fruit is equals to x0 and delete x0. So if I print fruit and x, I'm going to get this. So here, fruit is going to be equal to apple, and x is going to be equal to orange and pear. However, I can actually condense these two into one line by using the pop method. So here, fruit is equal to x dot pop 0. And if I run this once more, we are going to get the exact same thing. So here, the pop method will actually do these two steps at one go. Number six, dot sort versus sorted. So here I'm going to create a list x containing a bunch of numbers. And next, I'm going to call the sort method first. So x dot sort. And if I print x, I'm going to get a sorted x. So I'm just going to get one, two, three, four, five. Next, let's comment this out and let's try the sorted function. So y is equals to sorted x. And let's print y. And if I run this, I'm still going to get 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So the thing about the sorted function is that it does not affect the original x itself. So if I print x, I'm going to get 1, 5, 2, 4, 3. So notice that the original value of x is not sorted. And instead, a sorted copy of x is created and assigned to y. However, if we were to use the dot sort, the values in x itself will get sorted. So here, I would normally use the sort method, but in cases where I want my original list to remain as it is, I will use the sorted function. Number seven, sorting a list by a certain condition. So let's say I have a list fruits is equals to apple orange pear. And if I do fruits dot sort, and if I print fruits, the strings inside fruits will be sorted by alphabetical order. So in this case, it's still going to be apple orange pear. However, what if I want to sort by the length of the string? So here, pear has four characters, so it's the shortest and it should be first, followed by apple and then orange. So here, if I want to sort by a certain condition such as length, I can actually add this into the sort method. So key is equals to a function. So here, let's call it condition. And right now, we haven't defined our condition, so we need to do that. So define condition. So condition will take in one element, and it will return whatever we want to sort the element by. So here, we want to sort by the length of the string. So essentially, we return the length of the element. And if we run this, we will sort them by the length of the string. So pair is the shortest, followed by apple, and then followed by orange. Next, let's say instead of sorting by the length, we want to sort by the second letter of the string, so P, R, and E. So here, we remove the length, and here, we get the second letter of the string, which is at index 1. So if we run this once again, we'll have pear, apple, and orange. Because E comes first, followed by P, and then R. And if we want to sort by the third letter, we simply need to do this. And if we run this again, we are going to get orange, pear, and then apple. So one thing to note is that this works for the sorted function also. So let's say x is equals to sorted fruits. And here we print x followed by fruits. And if we run this, we will get orange, pear, apple. 
and our original list, which is fruits, will remain unchanged. So here, once again, let's say we want to sort the fruits by their length. So we add the length back to element. And here we have it, pear, apple, and orange. However, there is an alternative way that we can write this. So we are going to replace our condition function with a lambda function, which is a small anonymous function. Lambda x x and here we want to find the length of x so we simply do this and right now i can remove my condition function so that whatever i'm doing here will only take up one line of code and here we have it pear apple and orange number eight the dot clear method so let's say we have a list x is equals to one two three and if we x dot clear and if we print x again, we will simply get an empty list. So here, the clear method will simply clear everything inside the list and make it empty once again. So what's the difference between this and doing this, you might ask. So if we actually do this x is equals to empty list, we will actually achieve the same thing. But the difference stems from this acting on the list itself. So if we are in some sort of function and we really want to clear a certain list outside the scope of a function, this clear function here is more useful in emptying the list than this over here. So anyway, thanks for watching and hopefully you have learned at least one new thing about Python list today. See you in the next one.